Now, before we move forward, I wanted to point out that we do have available um, a complete list of all the forms, both TR and TREC forms that you will need for a listing, for a buyer, and a lease. And I think I have some condo ones down here as well. So if you are um, not an agent with White Rock Realty, uh, first of all, I, I'd love to chat with you to see if we might be a good fit. But um, nevertheless, I am more than happy to provide these for you, um, this document specifically with regards to what documents you will need for listing, buyer, lease, condo, and so on. The list does include um, all the new mandatory forms as well. So if you are in Texas, then you are familiar with zip forms. You just create your zip form template put all these documents in there. And every time you create a new transaction, you just add that template onto that transaction and all these blanks will pop in. So if you want this list, uh, you can either call or text me at this number, 469-955-2343. Or if you'd rather send an email, send that to brad at whiterocktexas.com. Uh, and as always, if you want to know more about us, you can go to www.whiterocktexas.info. Okay, so um, without further ado, let's go ahead and just launch into the uh, buyer's representation agreement from scratch. So um, here it is. Now, if you are ever um, unsure about the recency of your documents, just go down to the bottom on any one of these pages. And this is the number of the document, but this is when it was updated. Now, if you already had contracts and forms in templates, um, usually when TREC or TR does new ones, um, any old ones are replaced with the new versions. Now, every time I say that, I get a handful of people that say that doesn't happen. I have to manually put them in. And so all I can tell you is that the well over a decade number of years that I've been doing this, um, they have all always auto updated. So, but it obviously behooves you to check to make sure that you are working within um, or off the same current documents. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go through this line by line. Uh, try and hang with me. All this is very, very important. So um, let's go. So this is the residential real estate listing uh, agreement. Um, and so today we're talking about sellers. Now I will um, review a, another form that I would recommend you include in here as well, but I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. So uh, for the sake of time, I already put in here who our client is, who we are, and all of our information, okay? And then you move down here, and if it is a typical um, home that you're selling within a subdivision, it will have a lot in block. Whenever it says addition here, and I put in here, that is the subdivision name, okay? That is the subdivision name. So it should say lot, block, subdivision name, what city it's in, and then the actual address. Now, you can also put in here the parcel ID or legal description, um, whatever, but at least the address, okay? That, that has to be in there. All right, so moving down, if the seller wishes to exclude something from their listing, that they don't want conveyed to the next buyer, you have to list it here. So what would be some of those things? Well, maybe uh, the seller over the years installed a um, $5,000 chandelier that they wanna take with them. Maybe they wanna take all of the um, mounted brackets that they've used for a TV. Maybe they wanna take their ring doorbell. 
Now, in those last two examples, if they do that, just as a side note, they have to return the condition of those products or where they were back to the original condition. In other words, if they choose to exclude wall mounts from a TV, they have to fill in those holes, okay? Also, if they choose to take their ring doorbell, they have to put in another doorbell that is just a normal doorbell, okay? But these are the things that they would not want to convey. And then you're gonna come down here to paragraph 2E, is this property in an HOA? I'm gonna say that it is. So that should trigger to you the need to include other documentation about the home being in a mandatory uh, homeowners association. Not gonna review that here, but there is a separate form that you're gonna to need to include if your listing is in an HOA. And maybe the most important thing is the list price. So let's say we're gonna list this for $400,000. The term, let's say it begins here, and I'm going to make this expire on January 3rd. I'm going to give them a good six months to sell it. And then we come down to um, how everyone is going to get paid. So um, paragraph five, um, and, and this bold kind of blurb here, it, you'll see on a lot of the contracts now. And it specifically says the broker compensation, so how we're getting paid, or the sharing of compensation between brokers, so between the two agents, is not set by law, nor fixed, controlled, recommended, or suggested by the Association of Realtors, meaning the Texas Association of Realtors, the MLS, or any listing service. Broker compensation is fully negotiable. Brokers independently determine their fees. And you're going to complete either paragraph 5A or 5B, not both. So um, 5A simply says, um, if the listing agent slash seller is going to pay the buyer's agent, so as always in Texas, this was always negotiable and optional, but they've put some stronger language in here to force us as agents to have a deeper conversation with a seller to make sure that they know that it is indeed optional. And here's how you might want to break this out. So when it was up here and it said, you need to fill out either 5A or 5B, we're going to fill out 5A first. And this pretty much is consistent with uh, the way it's always worked. Um, and this is going to be the example of with compensation for other broker. Other broker is a fancy way of saying the buyer's agent. So in 5A1, this is the entire amount that you're going to ask from your client, inclusive of what you're going to pay the buyer's agent. So let's say that um, the seller is willing to pay an entire fee of 5%, okay? And we're just gonna put in 5% of the sales price. Now, you could put in a flat fee um, or you could do something else, which is option B. But for this example, I'm going to put in uh, 5%. Then 5A2 says, from the amount stated here, broker will, broker will pay the other broker the following fees if the other broker procures a buyer that purchases the property. All right, so this says, from this 5%, I'm going to pay the buyer's agent how much? And so let's just say, in fairness's sake, it's going to be two and a half percent. So in my example, um, you're going to get two and a half percent and the other agent's going to get two and a half percent. And I know that because the total amount is five percent. OK, or you could eliminate this altogether and say I only the, the seller only wants to pay 
the other agent 4,500 bucks. So you could do that too, right? So, uh, um, five percent of that listing is going to be twenty thousand dollars. So, in my first example, the listing agent would get ten, and the and the buyer's agent would get ten. But let's say that for whatever reason they don't want to do that, you could put a flat fee here. But right now, I'm just going to leave that at two point five percent. Okay. Now, let's say that you had a conversation with the seller and they don't want to pay the other agent. Okay. So in that case, you would not fill this out at all. You would just go to paragraph B. And paragraph B simply says, I'll pay the listing agent, but I'm not paying a buyer's agent. And so if we're using the same math, we would just come here and let's say the uh, seller, because they're not going to pay another buyer's agent, they're going to pay you 3%. All right. And that's all you would fill out. So just to reiterate, you're going to either fill in 5A or 5B. And 5B says without compensation for the other agent. All right. And so this represents your fee only. Okay. All right. Now, continuing on, it goes on to explain when your fees are earned and payable. And let's say that, now remember, we represent the seller. So um, E3 here with regards to other fees, let's say the um, seller wanted you to handle, um, the home is, they don't live there anymore, but the home's not vacant. Um, and they wanted you to handle moving and cleaning the home when a new buyer comes around. So maybe that, those fees would go here. Maybe you're a listing agent that spends a lot of money on staging and uh, video, and you want to be reimbursed for that. This is where you would put that. Okay. Protection period. Okay. This specifically means that the time starting the day after the listing ends. So I think I put January 3rd. So on January 4th and continuing for 15 days. Um, sell means any transfer of any fee, simple interest in the property, whether by oral or written agreement. Not later than 10 days after this listing ends, broker may send your client. Now, remember, this is if the agreement ends and it hasn't sold. Broker may send seller written notice specifying the names of persons whose attention was called to the property during the listing. If the seller agrees to sell the property, during that protection period to a person named in that notice or to a relative of a person named in the notice, seller will pay the broker uh, that agreed upon commission. Okay, so in my example, I'm giving the seller 15 days should this agreement expire and the home not sell. Um, if someone comes forward that's already seen it and buys it or a relative of that person, Theoretically, I'm entitled to that commission. Okay, moving on. Um, all amounts payable to broker are paid in cash in uh, Denton County. So that's where we are. And then it says listing services. So how are you going to list it? How are, you, how are you going to market it? What's going to happen there? Notice regarding public marketing. If the pub, uh, property is publicly marketed, MLS rules require that the broker filed this listing with the multiple listing service of the MLS within one business day. Okay, so you got a day to put this in the MLS from the time it's signed. So if, if you need to get stuff ready or order a sign, make sure you post date the document. Public marketing includes, but is not limited to, flyers, displays in the windows, yard signs, digital marketing on public facing websites, brokerage website displays, 
uh, digital communication marketing like email blasts or social media. So basically what this means is that um, if it goes in the MLS, at least in the DFW area, you have a day uh, um, by which to market it. In other words, you cannot put a yard sign in, even if it says coming soon, and not put that listing in the MLS in some kind of status. So let's say that your yard sign does say coming soon. You have a day to put it in the MLS in coming soon status. Okay, so it can't be marketed in any way uh, without it being in the MLS from 24 hours of that activity. And then 6A1 is where you specify that you're going to put this in the MLS. And if you happen to belong to more than one MLS, you could check box 6A1A. Or let's say the seller um, knows that he can sell this home to his next door neighbor and you don't want to put it in the, or he doesn't want you to put it in the MLS. You could click this box, seller instructs broker not to file this listing with one or more MLS uh, listing or services until X days. And this is very, very common um, in that exact example. Seller has struck up a relationship with the next door neighbor who he determines wants to buy the home. He hires you to make sure the process goes smoothly, but he knows that he's not gonna need to file this in the MLS, but he's gonna say, well, just in case this doesn't sell to my next door neighbor, I'm gonna wait, you know, let's say 15 days. After that, if we don't do an amendment to this listing agreement that says I need more time because my neighbor looks like he's gonna buy it, on the 15th day, you're gonna put this in the MLS, okay? So that's really all that means. It's rare that they're not gonna want you to put that in the MLS, but that is one example. Okay, or he, has no, he just doesn't want this in the MLS at all, okay? Which kind of devalues what we bring to the table, but that is an option. Okay, and then it says, you know, what, what are the definitions of listing content, so on and so forth, what the seller agrees to, access of the property. It basically says that the seller has to be reasonable in letting people in. What scheduling company are you going to use? And there are a couple. And then there is an option where uh, the seller can choose the broker is or is not authorized to place a key box on the property. Because let's face it, the minute you do that, you are giving a key to somebody to enter the home. And so some sellers may not want you to do that. And so what's the alternative? Well, either the seller is going to let them in or they're going to require you to be present and you open the door in place of putting a key box on the doorknob. Okay. Intermediary paragraph nine, this just states that if someone else from your brokerage brings a buyer and that agent represents them, that's, that constitutes an intermediary situation. Or if a buyer comes forward and they're not represented and you want to represent them, so now you're representing both buyer seller, that constitutes an intermediary situation. This box just says, hey, if that happens, you're okay with it. Now, they have their right to change their mind um, when the time comes, uh, but this just says, I either want it or I don't want it as the seller. Okay, confidential information. Unless the seller tells you to you know, disclose certain information, you can't. Um, good rule of thumb is, is that the buyer shouldn't be made aware of anything that isn't public knowledge. So through the MLS or through any kind of third party channel. Broker's authority. So what we're gonna do for them. And then there's an option for the seller to either say yes or no to 
do they want us to list this on the internet? All right, and as you're putting this listing in, there are boxes to check where you can do that. Now it defaults to, yes, I want this on the internet, which is what most people do, but some people don't for various reasons. So if it's just an MLS listing only, that's where that would be determined. And then paragraph C, this states what kind of financing the seller is willing to take. And so why wouldn't you take everything? Well, there are certain programs um, and certain loan types that are um, not necessarily advantageous to certain kinds of homes. Okay, so more on that later, but 99% of the time, the seller is going to want to take any kind of financing available. But this does break it down to give the seller a uh, choice. Okay, so back up here in broker's compensation in paragraph five, it mentioned something here. So after we got done breaking out who pays what who, it goes on to say, note, seller paying buyer's expenses. So in our world, that's paragraph 12 in the one to four family residential contract. It says, in addition to paying the above broker's fees, seller may be asked by a buyer to contribute an amount towards that buyer's expenses, such as a buyer's broker's fee or other expenses payable by buyer under a sales contract. So again, that's all paragraph 12. And that could be closing costs. That could be an amount that the buyer uses to buy down the interest rate. That could be an amount that goes towards paying their agent, the buyer's agent. Um, it just depends. And so now that we're at paragraph 11, let's talk about that. So before we get to addressing that, I want to make you aware of something. In paragraph 11, it outlines the minute they sign this agreement, what the broker's authority is. So what we're gonna do, what by default, the seller is giving us permission to do. And so it says things like broker will use reasonable efforts and act diligently to market the property, procure a buyer, if the seller doesn't want it on the internet, broker's authorized to market the property with the following financing uh, options. And then it goes down to describe some things in paragraph D. Advertise the property by means and methods as broker determines, including but not limited to, creating and placing advertisements with uh, with interior and exterior photographic and audiovisual images, place a for sale sign on the property, furnish the comps. And then it says, disseminate information about the property to other brokers and to prospective buyers, including offers of compensation to buyer representatives and applicable disclosures or notices that seller is required to make under law or a contract. So everything that we placed in paragraph five with regards to who pays what who, that has to be communicated somehow, right? Because these are no longer in the MLS. So how does that work? Well, when a buyer sets up an appointment, through a showing service, they are typically going to reach out to you as a seller's agent. So hint, hint, you need to be available. If you have a listing, part of your duty is to be available to take calls and texts from other agents or emails. And that agent is going to reach out to you and say, are you working any other offers? Um, how, do you have any interested buyers? And is the seller providing 
compensation for the other, for me, for the other broker, for the buyer's agent? And how much is that? Right? So paragraph 11 gives you the right as the, as the seller's agent to communicate that. Okay, so that is the rhythm of that process. Buyer's agent calls you, please be available. Please be available. And they're going to ask you how much, if anything, is your seller going to pay me, the buyer's agent? All right, and this paragraph allows us to do that. I just want to make that clear. Now, the other important distinction within paragraph 11 is what we covered a second ago. Either yes or no, the seller either does or does not authorize the listing broker to share with other brokers and prospective buyers that the seller is willing to consider contributing an amount towards the buyer's expenses. Now, it then goes on to say in big, bold letters, seller is not obligated to pay any specific amount and has sole discretion to determine the amount the seller will pay towards the buyer's expenses during the negotiations with the buyer. Okay, so they can say, yes, I, I do agree to even consider some amount. Maybe it's a buck. Maybe it's $10,000. Don't know. That's going to come within the negotiation. So why? So how would that look? Well, if we're selling the home for $400,000 and all of a sudden a month and a half goes by and no one's interested, but uh, all of a sudden an interested buyer comes forward and they're willing to offer three fifty. dollars and the seller is getting desperate, maybe they want to take that offer. And the buyer says, I can buy this for $350, but I'm asking also for $5,000 in paragraph 12. Well, maybe because that offer is substantially lower than the original list price, the, the seller opts to not contribute anything. Right. So that's one example. So even though they say, yes, I'm willing to, it doesn't mean they're going to. Um, or they're just going to say no. Okay, I am not willing to consider anything. Okay, and, and you're going to run into that. Okay, all right, moving on um, is really the, the section where the seller has to um, kind of disclose what they know about their current situation um, with regards to the property. So I'm not bound to another listing agreement. I don't have any other liens other than most likely the current bank that you know holds the mortgage, uh, whatever. Okay, so this is pretty standard. And then limitation of liability, what the broker is and is not responsible for. Special provision. So because this agreement is between the brokerage and the client, you as the agent are more than welcome to put something in here. Um, so that is not a no-no. You can go ahead and do that if it's not covered elsewhere in the document. Okay, and then here, uh, is where you would click any other addenda that go with this listing. So those things might be, you know, the first one is going to always be your IABS if and a seller's disclosures notice for that matter. Um, if it was built before 78, you're going to put in a lead-based paint disclosure. If it's within a MUD or a property improvement district, a PID. And then the other thing I would include would be the seller's authorization to disclose and advertise certain information. Okay, I'm going to go through that in this video. So just hang tight. And then all this is just information. If the seller is a foreign person as defined by the federal law, so if they're not a legal citizen here, in the US, 
you're going to have to check is uh, or you know or is not a foreign person. All right, so um, that has tax implications that we can go into later, and the title company can help you with that. But that is an important thing to delineate. And then you put down here uh, our brokerage's name, our brokerage license number, and then you are always going to be a broker associate of uh, of me. So I don't sign these. You you guys do. Um, and then put your name. Okay. Not mine. All right. And then the seller, seller signature, they give you two lines here because sometimes it's uh, two spouses. But that's kind of it for the, for the listing agreement. Now, the other one that I wanted to go over was the seller's authorization to um, advertise certain information. So this goes back to uh, paragraph 11, right? Seller's authorization to release and advertise certain information. Now, this always existed, and let me just kind of refresh your memory on how we used this before the whole compensation issue bubbled up. Um, let's say your seller um, is getting another job outside the state, and he or she needs to sell this home fast. Um, you might want to write in here, seller gives me permission to say, to say motivated seller in all advertising. Um, if it is a married couple that's selling the home and it's because they're getting a divorce, they are likely not going to want to have you disclose that, not because they're ashamed, but because the buyer could possibly use that um, as leverage to negotiate the price a little bit harder, right? Um, but this is one example to where, you know, just to refresh your memory of what they might want to tell you to say, there are other examples here. But the addition to this document is paragraph A, seller authorizes broker to disclose to other brokers, meaning the listing broker can tell the buyer broker and those prospective buyers that the seller will consider contributing an amount up to, and then you can insert a dollar amount towards the buyer's expenses. Buyer may use these funds to pay for buyer's broker's fees and other expenses payable by buyer under a sales contract. So let's say that generally speaking, the seller's open to this concept, hasn't been even listed yet, so no offers have come forward. So we really don't know what reality is just yet. But conceptually speaking, the seller's going to make a ton of money when he sells this house in this example. And let's say because of that, he thinks, yeah, you know, for the right offer, I can probably offer 5000 bucks. Because it says up to. So when the rubber meets the road, it might work out to be $2,000. Don't know yet. But then it goes on to say in big, bold letters, seller is not obligated to pay this amount or any amount unless the seller agrees to such payment in the sales contract. Where would that be? Paragraph 12. Seller has the sole discretion to determine the amount seller will pay towards buyer's expenses during the negotiations with the buyer. So in other words, this says, yeah, I'll think about contributing it. But based on the terms of the offer, uh, this may not be the, the amount. And through the negotiation process in paragraph 12, 
we're going to put down exactly how much I as the seller will contribute. Now, once those documents are signed, he or she can't change their mind. But this just opens the door to that possibility. All right, so just because he says it doesn't mean he's legally bound to it until it goes in the contract. All right, so if you are doing a listing presentation, the contracts that you want signed are the listing agreement that we just went over, this, okay, so seller's authorization to disclose and advertise certain information, uh, the survey and T47 and the seller's disclosure. Those are the main documents, but this is kind of a new one. So I wanted to make sure that y'all knew that it's my opinion that this should be included in all the listing documents. Okay, so that is uh, the review of how to fill out the listing agreement and the seller's authorization to disclose and advertise certain information.